Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I think we, we, we can start. And welcome to all the participants to this live event to present our EFSA's traineeship experience. We are so excited to welcome such a big group. We are now almost 200 uh, participants, and we hope you are hungry for a new experience. Working at EFSA as a trainee may really kickstart your career and professional experience in whatever field you're specialized in. To so stay with us to learn all about it. Let me introduce myself. I am Carolina and I am currently EFSA's traineeship coordinator. I work in HR human capital unit in the talent management team, and I am passionate about helping people achieve success. Now, just a few housekeeping notes before we get started. You are automatically connected to the audio broadcast. This, it means one way uh, audio listening only mode. Nevertheless, Feel free to interact and uh, submit your questions in English. Thank you. Uh, and you can use the Q&A uh, chat. You will find it on the right corner of your screen. We do trust our session will be answering um, a lot of questions throughout uh, uh, this course. Uh, also because we have taken into consideration all your questions when registering uh, to this session. However, don't worry, there will be a dedicated slot at the end only for Q&A's. Bear in mind that this event is being recorded and of course recordings will be published on uh, our EFSA's website. And super important, after, the, after this event, tell us how we did. You will receive a link to a dedicated feedback survey. Thank you. And now let's see what's on the menu for you. Thank you. Our event is divided in three parts. In this first part, we will start by exploring EFSA, what we do, who we are, uh, and how we bring diversity and inclusion to Europe, where we are, because we are working in the Food Safety Authority while living in the food capital, to then leave room to our traineeship call and its key ingredients. Joining me for this first part, I have my colleagues from uh, uh, talent management team, all young professionals, Lina, Bento, Patricia and Christiana. Uh, and then we move to the second part and that will be all about that cherry on the cake. What's in there for you? What's in there for you as a whole? What expect from a traineeship experience at ESSA? And who best to tell you than our former and current trainees. So stay tuned and get the most out of their experience. And finally, as I said, we will leave room for Q&A's, your Q&A's. Well, I hope you are now feeling enthusiastic, curious to learn all the details of this tasty menu, and I hope you have a wonderful moment ahead. Now, without any further ado, I would like to give the floor to my colleague Lina, Lina, are you ready to guide us? Hi everyone, my name is Lina and I'm from Ukraine. Hope you hear me well. So my background is international relations and European institution. And therefore, let me tell you about European Food Safety Authority and the world of European Union Agency overall. So what is EFSA? Why was it founded? What is its mission and what are the goals? Moreover, how does it operate on a daily basis? Let us watch the virtual guide and find out answer to all of these questions. Our expertise lies in the safety of the food and feed chain. We assess the risks linked to food, therefore everything related to nutrition, plant health, animal health, and a lot more. The European Food Safety Authority was founded in 2002, following a series of food crises. At that point, the European Commission decided that it was time to start a program designed to improve the food safety system in Europe, help ensure a high level of consumer protection, clearly separate risk assessment and risk management functions. 
Restore and maintain confidence in the food supply in Europe. You now know why EFSA was founded, but how does it operate on a daily basis? The European Commission, the European Parliament and the Member States are EFSA's customers. It works this way. EFSA's customers send requests or ask questions related to food and feed safety matters. EFSA answers in the form of a scientific output drafted and agreed by its experts. But what does EFSA need in order to succeed in answer to customers' requests? One dot information in the form of data on which to base our assessments. Two, access to the scientific methodologies that enable us to perform the assessments. Three, the people, our experts, who execute the work with their expertise. EFSA devotes significant resources to gathering and analyzing data and developing its methodologies. Moreover, EFSA is, not, is a part of a bigger community, the community of European Union agencies. And in addition to ensuring the food safety within the European Union member states, another goal of EFSA is to provide cooperation within Europe and beyond to achieve comprehensive and faster results. Let me give you a concrete example. So when we deal with viruses, bacteria and infections, European Medicines Agency is required to investigate the effectiveness of newly created vaccines, while the European Chemical Agency would be asked to work on the authorization procedures for the disinfectant and sanitation products, while EFSA, who on the daily basis is focused on nutrition, lands and animal welfare, would be required to examine the possibility of those viruses, bacteria and infections to be transmitted through food. But agencies are not only their missions and goals, they are made by people. And in our case, in case of EFSA, by scientists, experts, professionals in different areas of expertise. And let me pass the floor to my dear colleague Bansu to tell you about the people of EFSA. Thank you very much, Lina. Hello, everyone. My name is Bansu and I'm 24 years old. I graduated in American Culture and Literature and I did my minor in International Relations. Lina talked about how EFSA provides scientific opinion to our stakeholders. And now let's talk about the people who are making this happen. Here at EFSA, we have two scientific and two non-scientific departments. One of them focuses on the science and the other works in the business. We have risk assessment production, risk assessment services, and our chief scientist office working in the scientific departments. In the business field, we have management services, communication and partnership. Currently in the house, we have more than 600 staff members. We also have a big community of experts who work with us for the scientific panels and working groups. And finally, every year, we welcome around 100 trainees with all different kinds of backgrounds. We have a big population here at EFSA and diversity is one of our core values. In the table, you can see that we have large variety of nationalities. For example, look at our staff members. We have all different member states represented in EFSA like Belgium, Portugal, Romania, Spain and Finland. On the other hand, our current trainees not only come from the member states, but also they all come from different corners of the world, such as Costa Rica, India, Nigeria, United States, and just like me, they come from Turkey. The average age of our trainees is uh, 27, but please note that we do not have any age limit, so all ages are welcome to apply to our traineeship call. Now I would love to give the floor to my colleague Christiana to talk about diversity and inclusion at EFSA. 
Hello, everybody. Thank you very much, Bensu. My name is Cristiana, and I have a study background in uh, psychology and uh, also work experience in HR and uh, communications as well as branding activities. And now we're coming to a very interesting topic that is very close to us, which is diversity and inclusion. Now, Today we're talking about the traineeship and indeed the traineeship brings enormous value in terms of diversity because we have trainees joining from all corners of the world as Bensu was previously showing you. Now we are about to share with you a video of a number of initiatives that we have been launching this year and the beautiful thing about these initiatives is that they have been uh, implemented through a shared diversity and inclusion calendar which is accessible to everybody in EFSA varying from science scientific um, colleagues and business as well so everybody has the possibility to add initiatives they wish to share with colleagues without further ado here is the video celebrated World Braille Day. And also International Women's Day. As you can see on the sides, those are actual dedications that were made from a colleague to another or more colleagues. Also enhancing a level of, um, of um, connection between us and recognition. We also celebrated Black History Month, which was actually um, proposed by a colleague of ours uh, who is a current trainee. And of course, we also wanted to remember all those people that lost their lives during the Holocaust. My name is Anna and I have chosen the word collective memory as to strengthen the resilience of young people against ideologies of hatred. My name is Elena and the word I choose is collective responsibility. Collective responsibility because we have the duty to promote education, documentation and research. My name is Wojciech, in memory, in memory of all Jews murdered during the Second World War in memory of all nations killed during Second World War, and in memory of my grandmother's brother who was murdered in Auschwitz. I call all the leaders in the world to stop ongoing war. Thank you very much. And now I would like to pass the floor to my colleague Patricia, who will guide you into the food capital. Thank you so much, Christiana. Hello everyone, my name is Patricia, I'm from Sweden and my background is in organizational psychology, human resources and finance management. I'm here to talk to you about living in the food capital, working for EFSA um, and experiencing your traineeship here. So of course EFSA is kind of like your own a sphere, but what about going outside of EFSA? Where will you be living and what will you be doing? So it is a beautiful uh, city in the, located in the region of Emilia Romagna and you have a lot of opportunities for exposure and exploring into other areas such as Milan, La Spezia, Florence, Bologna, depending on a little bit where you would like to go. We have the seaside in La Spezia and also of course shopping centres, Milan and uh, very much so art, culture, architecture, which is kind of like the epicentre in this area. Let's have a look into some of the distance time that it takes for you. Um, we have a look here at, for example, Bologna, Milan, Florence and the seaside all reachable for a day or weekend trip. 
if you are a music and food lover, you're in the right place. Here are some places you can't miss. Farnese Theatre, Reggio Theatre, House and Museum of Arturo Toscanini, Auditoriums, Cathedral, just to mention a few. However, our main character is Maria Luigia, the Duchess of Parma, who used to have Parco Ducala as her private garden. Now, Parco Ducala is walking distance from EFSA, where you can enjoy a nice lunch and just sit in the sun and enjoy your break. Maria Luigia left her mark not only in history, but politics, art, culture as well of the city. But most importantly, gastronomy and the way of being at the table. We've got over 50 restaurants, 30 producers, eight museums, and it's a Parma UNESCO creative city of gastronomy, the heart of Italian food valley, and one of the destinations with the highest number of typical products protected with quality brands in Italy, the Parma ham, porcini mushroom di Borgotaro, and of course, we've got our main, um, main favourite, is the Parmigiano Reggiano and wines from the Parma Hills and many more. The Parma City of Gastronomy is a product club that protects the quality and typical products of Parma territory. So it guarantees uniqueness to your experience in our city. If I have intrigued you with the beauties and goodness of Parma, you just have to pack your suitcases and come over. I would like to take over and finish my Houston sentence and send over the word to Christiana, who is going to talk about our trainership call. Thank you very much, Patricia. And now here we are at the heart of the presentation, the trainship. So let's go and explore a bit in more depth what it takes for you to join us. So I would like to remind you that applications are going to close on May 15th. So the, um, the deadline is slowly approaching, but let's go a bit in more depth into what it takes. So the areas of interest are numerous, as you can see. We have positions in science, in business and a lot more. Now, do you have the key ingredients to become an EFSA trainee? Let's discover it together. In terms of the eligibility, to be eligible, you have to have completed a bachelor degree of three years. And a B2 level in English is a must because our day-to-day -day language is English. Then, as I previously mentioned before, in terms of diversity and inclusion, both EU and non-EU citizens are welcome to apply. And also, if you have been a previous EU trainee or Blue Book trainee in another agency, you are absolutely welcome to apply. And um, of course, there's also to mention this point. If you have been um, employed by EFSA before, either you have done a traineeship before or you worked under another contract, uh, in that case, unfortunately, uh, you would not be eligible. Now, looking into what's in for you, a 12-month contract with a nice retribution, monthly grant of 1,463 euros. And once again, I repeat, the language, the day-to-day -day language is English. Now, I would like to guide you into the timeline and the selection procedure that is going to come about in the next months. So here is the timeline. As you can see, we've been live with the call since April up to the 15th of May. Between May and June, there's going to be the pre-selection and also the interviews. The outcomes are going to be out in the middle of summer, so between July and August. And within October and November, the selected candidates will be taken on board. Now, let's explore together a little bit the selection procedure. Now, the first one is the application phase, which may some of you may have started or a lot of you will start today, hopefully. So remember that you have to apply via the website, the EFSA career page, which is going to look like this. You would have to click on young professionals to find the traineeship and kindly remember that we do not accept spontaneous applications. Everything must be done from the website. Now, the next step is the eligibility and the CV screening. And I repeat, EU and non-EU candidates are more than welcome to apply and you must have completed a three-year university degree. Now, the next step, exciting, the online live interview. If you would have made it through the CV screening, you're going to receive a nice invitation to your live interview with the selection board. 
It's going to be around 45 minutes long. You're going to need a well-functioning Wi-Fi, camera and your microphone ready to speak. And then as a final step, we have a talent pool, also known as a reserve list, that's going to be established. So some candidates may end up in the reserve list. Others from the reserve list may be selected. And um, kindly uh, remember that we cannot disclose any information about people that are within the, um, the talent pool. And finally, at that point, the offer will be sent to the selected candidates. And now I would like to leave you to Carolina, who is going to guide you into the practical tips, getting a successful application. Carolina, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm back. I'm very pleased to be back. Oh, I'm still, you know, digesting all this information. I hope you are also taking a lot of um, information home with you. Uh, but more in particular, we have just seen our process. And now I really would like to give you some practical tips to go through it in a positive way. Let's start with that moment when you prepare your application and how you can make it stand out. Firstly, it is extremely important that you take your time while preparing your application. And please don't wait for the last date. OK, don't wait for the 15th. Start earlier. Sit, relax and thorough read our traineeship call and then focus on these two key aspects, your CV and your motivation. Your CV, remember, while inserting the information, try to be clear and concise. Make your application easy to read. Break things down. Use short sentence and short paragraphs. And you know, don't be afraid of um, using subheadings or bullet points. Use the words we will be scanning for, the ones that you will find on the call. And then your motivation will tell us who you are. Focus on what makes you unique. No one has the same skill set and background than you have. So take the time to determine what makes you unique. Think through the expertise and experiences you have and how they make you an ideal candidate for our EFSA traineeship program. Highlight the personality traits and skills. What could be your unique contribution to EFSA? And just to wrap up, let me give you some do's. Just, thank you, just a, a little bit of, thank you. So to stand out in the application, focus on what you have achieved, preparing concrete examples. You can also use keywords, reflecting what is important for us, what is important for you, for the areas that you have highlighted and expressed as areas of interest. Avoid uh, too many details. And please make it personal, make it yours, who you are, what you want to learn with this opportunity, with this unique experience. Finally, you should review and submit your application. After the CV screening, let's imagine you are selected for the online video interview. Well, congratulations, right? And during the interview, it's not just important uh, that you have a good connection, that you have um, a nice uh, camera on, but it's important that during the interview, you try to be again clear and concise. And while you're presenting your experience, focus on this simple and effective star technique. Be the star. The star technique is, is, is really a way um, to keep your answers concise but informative. So when you are giving a real life example that demonstrate a, a skill, a specific knowledge, remember to use these points. S stands for situation. What was the context at the time? T stands for tasks. What you needed to do? What were you requested to do? To change, to create, to implement? A, actions. 
how you actually did it. What did you put in place? Finally, R. R is all about results, how it turned out. And of course, any lesson learned. Also, what could you do different in the next time? So what did you learn from this experience? And now, well, I hope we we manage, you know, to put all these key ingredients together for you. Not only what we do, who we are, where we are, but also our traineeship process in particular. And to conclude this first part, please remember the key date. Remember our timeline. You still have 10 days to apply. If you are successful, we will be welcoming you on one of the two uh, intakes, 1st of October or the 1st of uh, November. Thank you. And we are concluding the first part. So thank you for still staying with us. I see actually that the numbers are increasing. We are almost 300 all here together. Isn't it amazing? And now it's time for that cherry on the cake I mentioned you earlier. Our second part at this stage, if I would be you, uh, probably, let me think, you might be wondering, oh gosh, what's in it for me? What do I really get from this traineeship experience at ESSA? One year, 12 months, whole round experience in our mission from farm to fork. And believe us, we definitely offer more than financial support. And now, walking you through some of these key benefits, I leave you again with my colleague Patricia and perhaps some special guests. Patricia, am I right? Thank you, Carolina. Yes, you're definitely right. We are ready for some amazing um, current and past trainees to share their experiences with us. And first of all, I would like to highlight some of the main ingredients in this amazing all round experience. First one being and um, diving into the EU uh, environment and this being really a springboard for a career in the EU environment. And someone to talk to us about this is Shurur from Faroe Islands. And I would like to ask you, Shurur, how has your trainership experience at EFSA helped you to shape your career in the EU environment? Hello, Patricia, thank you. Um, um, for me, uh, the traineeship experience at EFSA was definitely a springboard for a career in the EU. I'm currently working as a HR coordinator at the European Union Agency for the Space Programme in the Czech Republic, Prague. Uh, but my career in the EU and HR started at EFSA as a trainee back in 2017 when I was doing a traineeship in the talent selection team at EFSA, involved in, in all types of activities linked to, to recruitment uh, and also beyond. Being a trainee at EFSA is, is, is really rewarding uh, experience. Um, it's a great opportunity for you to do hands-on work. Uh, trainees at EFSA uh, are not just asked to shadow their supervisors. Uh, if you show a proactive uh, an attitude and, are and if you're motivated, you really, like I said, get to do hands on work and, and, and contribute uh, to, to EFSA's uh, mission. So um, a traineeship at EFSA really gives you a lot of skills that are valuable if you're interested in a career in the EU or in the private sector. Um, you get to work in an inclusive environment as it has already been in, uh, covered uh, in this in this webinar, the diverse environment. Uh, you get to work with professionals from all different kinds of backgrounds uh, in a very innovative environment as, as well. Um, lots of cross unit, uh, cross departmental opportunities. You will not just work with your immediate colleagues, but also on projects uh, across the agency as a whole and beyond uh, with stakeholders, uh, leaving you with, uh, with uh, valuable uh, technical skills, of course, uh, depending on which area uh, um, of, of where you will be a trainee in the scientific fields or in the business uh, fields. 
uh, skills such as European public administration um, and like I said also the technical skills but but also soft skills or behavioral skills like dealing with stakeholders, time management and organizational skills. Perhaps for some of you this will be your first uh, work experience so organizational skills uh, are very important. Of course you're also used to doing that uh, during your studies. Also dealing with change, working under pressure uh, and so on. All, all really uh, valuable skills if you're interested in a career in the EU uh, or in international environments uh, in general. So yeah, I, I would definitely recommend the traineeship at EFSA and say that indeed it is a stepping stone for you that wants a career in the EU. Uh, as like I said, it really uh, provides you with lots of technical and soft skills that are useful. So that being said, Patricia, uh, I hope uh, I, I somewhat answer your questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rula. Yes, absolutely. You definitely did. And that sounded like in being included in a lot of projects also makes me think of the next ingredient in our trainership, and that is one big pillar, a supportive environment. And here to speak about their experience about a supportive environment is Rita from Portugal and Piera from Italy. And I would like to ask you both, as we know, our work environment in which we find ourselves every single day, it can of course greatly influence how we feel about our contribution, our work and our environment. And in which way do you both feel uh, more supported by doing um, your working environment? Uh, thank you for the great question, Patricia. Good morning, everyone. I'm Rita and I'm currently a trainee in the Risk Assessment Logistics Unit. Uh, to answer your question, I would say as a young adult who's freshly begun their professional career, it's been both exciting and refreshing to feel challenged and supported for the past seven months at EFSA. So at EFSA, each trainee is assigned usually an advisor who overviews, supports, encourages our work as a trainee. And I've been paired with Piera, who has introduced me to most of my tasks, given me advice about how to make the most of my time at EFSA, and really answered all my questions and doubts, no matter how silly I thought they might be. So beyond that, I have found that colleagues in my unit and even in other units are always eager to help, share their knowledge with me, and it really has been a great opportunity to continuously learn and grow and just absorb everything around me. Beyond my work, I have found that the trainee community at EFSA, all other 100 and plus trainees, um, have really been helping make my move to Parma and my, my work at EFSA, my integration in the city as smooth as possible, which I really appreciated. So TACOP, the trainee community project, um, organizes cultural activities for us during the weekends, after work get togethers, and they really show up for you with any tips and suggestions you might need with settling and living in Parma, which has been incredibly useful. I find that one of the most positive aspects of, for example, mine and Piera's relationship has been the opportunity to receive con con constant feedback and guid guidance from a colleague who has a bit more experience than me and who might see things in another way. Uh, I feel like I've spoken enough, Piera. <laughs> Hello, good morning everybody. So I'm Piera and I'm my best trainee advisor and I work of course in the risk assessment logistics unit as Rita. Uh, this is my second time as a trainee advisor and I must say that both times have been very rewarding. Uh, I've been at EPSA for 18 years and I think that being able to share my knowledge and experience with a young professional is a, a great opportunity. And in the daily activities, I guide and mentor Rita with uh, on-the-job training, but I also support Rita when issues and obstacles may arise. Um, I must say that we also exchange a lot on work dynamics, and it's so interesting to see that from the generational point of view, to see the differences that there, there, there are, of course, between us. 
Um, of course, we also have to go through some formalities. So we we set objectives in written at the beginning of the traineeship. We do a mid dialogue at halfway, and at the end, I will draft a report on Rita's experience and performance. Um, the support concept in our relationship. So it's not only present in what I do for Rita, so training, helping, mentoring, but it's also present in what Rita does with me because Rita helps me in my daily activities. But yes, Rita also teaches me because Rita is a young professional, is very creative and is always ready to bring in new ideas. And this is really a great opportunity for me to learn because I've been here for 18 years, so I, I've got the possibility to work with some fresh eyes. Um, so it's really a win-win situation and I really like it a lot. So thank you, Patricia, for, uh, for these questions and I give back the floor to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that was really inspiring because we can see now that not only can the trainees learn from from EFSA, but EFSA actually learns from our trainees from all over the world. And this is um, really beautiful. So um, our next big pillar uh, in this traineeship experience is working in a stimulating environment with inspiring projects. All of our testimonials so far have talked about projects and how they are involved in projects. And here we do have Alejandro from Spain, who is going to talk to us about this experience. But before, I would like to ask you, Alejandro, having this ability to create a stimulating work environment, of course, it is one of our goals here at EFSA. But maybe perhaps you could share something particular with your experience and tell us a little bit about a project that have had a great impact on your uh, experience and, and really why. I think we can't hear you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I was saying thank you very much, Patricia. I am uh, a trainee in the Knowledge, Innovation and Partnership Management Unit. Um, and uh, you may not know, but uh, EFSA has recently changed its internal structure. And for that, we had many, many new opportunities to redefine many of the processes that EFSA is running. In our case, in our unit, we are in charge of the scientific capacity building process. And we wanted to explore this process beyond trainings. Um, for that, we, we were not only defining the process, but we were uh, also setting the pillars and uh, thinking about the skeleton of the process and also kind of focusing this process in, into the future scope of, of EFSA. Uh, for that, we had a very initial brainstorming session within the unit, thinking about many ideas and, you know, driving crazy about how we can uh, set uh, the pillars of this process. And we were also asking ourselves how we think capacity, capacity building should look like in EFSA. Then we presented this uh, plan to the uh, higher level, to a higher level, you know, to the big bosses out there. And after they gave us our their feedback and other impressions, we wanted to share all of this with our all our colleagues that are somehow related with this process. So we organized a thinking space, um, and we wanted to be a bit creative here. And what we wanted to do is kind of also engage them a lot in this uh, thinking space. And for that, we decided that we wanted to create the metaphor of a garden. So what we decided to do is to, you know, in this garden, we have activities which are super new and that we have to work a lot on them. And those activities are, are little sprouts in the garden. And then we have a forest with a lot of trees, you know, that are very, very well based there and those are the activities that we uh, you know been working for long in EFSA and that we know that they work well already like the trainings for example um, so uh, in this thinking space we were inviting all our, all our colleagues to uh, give uh, us uh, their ideas like by giving us seeds planting seeds in our garden and uh, you know they were uh, 
you know, planting these ideas that could in the future, you never know, grow and, and become activities that uh, are um, supporting this process in, in, in our unit. Um, some of these activities are, for example, uh, hosting trainings in a platform that is called EU Academy, which is super interesting because this platform is shared by all member states and many um, agencies uh, across the whole European Union, like ECA and and so on. And uh, we also created a circle that uh, um, feeds by uh, the needs that people need from scientific capacity building and also the solutions that we can provide. So there was, you know, this uh, feedback constantly between um, those uh, two aspects and also we created uh, trainings that we could share between agencies so that we can have um, and share this uh, common knowledge. Um, also something that is very very nice is that uh, you can also explore many networks that uh, have uh, you know that collaborate with ESA like for example uh, in our case the EREN which is the Emerging Risk Ex Exchange Network and also the Stakeholder Discussion Group on Emerging Risks so you can also you know talk with many colleagues that work on um, um, risk assessment for example um, in the European Union and Overall, which is, I think, the greatest thing is that you always feel that you have the same opportunities that uh, our staff here. So you could, uh, for example, um, en uh, enroll in many trainings that uh, give you opportunity to nurture your uh, education and even go on missions abroad. And uh, you can, you know, attend to events or meetings that are hosted in other countries within the European Union, which is, I think, super, super stimulating. I hope I answered your question, Patricia. <laughs> yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Alejandro. That was a wonderful testimonial and it made me think also a little bit about what our trainees are actually representing, you know, with this nice metaphor of the idea of the garden, right? Coming into EFSA, uh, starting from, from the beginning, really, and growing, right? Growing your experiences, growing your skills, your knowledge, and also contributing a lot. So it's um, it's really beautiful to see. And um, the last, but definitely not the least, a pillar of our amazing experience here is a modern, uh, modern working environment with flexible working arrangement. And here to talk about the, uh, her experience is Lina from Ukraine. Um, and I would like to ask you, Lina, uh, as you know, at EFSA now we have embraced this reality of digital uh, collaboration, solutions and this integration uh, as the way of the future. And moreover, we, we do understand the, um, the importance really of empowering people through a modern and flexible working environment, as this really is the, the way of the future of working. Um, and so maybe you could share some of your main important aspects um, that for you and also how this um, FSAS environment is, has been impacting you. Sure. Hello, everyone again. OK, um, really, I would like to tell you about one of the advantages of the EFSA traineeship, which was actually crucial for me in choosing this traineeship over any, anyone else. And as you said already, it's modern environment with flexible arrangements. And I know it sounds a little bit complicated, so let me explain you what it actually means in practice. So working in EFSA for me is not only to grow professionally, gain new skills, new knowledge and develop my career, but also it's a opportunity for me to live a joyful, active and balanced life. So look around me. I'm right in the center. Let me show it to you closer. Uh, I hope it will be seen better. OK, here we go. So I'm right in the center of the beautiful city of Parma, enjoying sun and wonderful weather today while drinking my coffee and eating a croissant. And guess what? Exactly working. So flexible working hours allow me to join a yoga class right next to the office or a French lesson online and come back to work afterwards. I also love doing small trips to the surrounding areas of uh, uh, Parma to different cities and towns, as Patricia was explaining before, and work from there. You would ask me, 
okay, but how is it even possible? And is it actually allowed? And I will tell you that yes, because in EFSA you can work, you can telework three times per week from a reasonable distance from the headquarters in Parma. And in practice, it means that you can do it either from, for instance, Ligurian sea coast or the Alpine mountains or Milan or Florence or Bologna. It's, it's up to you. Can you imagine an opportunity to actually choose whether you're walking today to the wonderful headquarter of EFSA next to the center of Parma to meet your colleague, to, to have a lunch in the amazing garden, and then work on site and share this knowledge and experience or to take a train to the mountains or a sea to enjoy the nature and the beauty of Italy, of the country itself. So how about that, Patricia? Did I answer your question and actually explain one of many advantages of EFSA trainership? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, that was, wow, Lina, beautiful. And as we can see today, I'm sitting in the headquarters of EPSA. Meanwhile, Lina is enjoying the beautiful town centre of Parma. So you got a little bit of both, actually. And I hope that with, um, I would like to, first of all, thank all of these amazing testimonials, our amazing trainees, which really makes the world go round at EPSA. And um, also uh, would like to, uh, ask you now it is your turn um, hopefully this uh, um, presentation and this webinar has been clear and we have been able to outline the main aspects most important ingredients and benefits of this trainership and right now i would like to pass on the floor to carolina who is going to uh, talk about these questions that it's time for you to ask thank you Thank you. Thank you to all of you actually so far. Uh, it has been exciting hearing all of your experiences uh, and really you made me feel part of it. So thank you. Thank you. I will share this moment. And now it's actually time for you watching us from home or from wherever you are right now. We will try to address as many questions as possible, but please, uh, no worries. Um, any outstanding questions, you can, of course, uh, send us um, an email. Uh, you can also send, uh, see already in our website a lot of uh, your frequently asked questions and also uh, candidates before you that have um, sent us their questions. We try to answer uh, and they are also available on our website. But now let's have a look. I'm looking at uh, the chat now. Okay. Just a, a bit of a glitch here. Okay. So we have, okay, the first question, okay. Um, in EFSA, in a, the EFSA trainership application for each uh, application, you must choose the thematic area. OK, is there any handbook or website where I can find more details? Absolutely. You can uh, look at our website. You will find uh, all this information. You will also find the key highlights. What are we working uh, on right now? What have been our latest um, uh advices so you will find everything there including also um uh the the organigram because of course today we gave you just a brief introduction you know how we are structured and how we operate you will see that more in detail in our website Please stay tuned to our website because there are also a lot of uh, um, new changes coming on to that. It, they will, it will look even more user friendly in a few days. Another question, what kind of certifications do we need to submit? So I just wanted to uh, reassure all of you that at the moment of your application, we do not require any supporting document. OK, so just submit your application without uh, having to uh, submit any um, document documentation. Thank you. 
Um, continuing with the questions. OK. Good morning, everyone. If we are due to graduate from university in July, could we apply? Well, this is a, a question that we um, we often receive, but unfortunately, I have to answer that if right now, when we close the call on the 15th of May, you still don't have um, your certificate from university of at least, you know, your bachelor of at least three years, unfortunately for this year, you are not yet eligible. But of course, that should not prevent you from having a look. Uh, Stay connected with us, stay in touch through all our social media uh, channels that we will also give you uh, all the details later on. And please apply uh, to our uh, call next year. Thank you. Uh, OK, oh, and I, oh, so many. OK, I have another question. If I haven't had any particular experience outside the bachelor or a master degree, is there a problem for the selection? No, not at all. We do not require uh, any previous experience. You didn't see it uh, amongst our eligibility criteria. And moreover, remember all this, the part on all the practical tips where you can emphasize uh, all the aspects of your life. So you are definitely welcome to apply. And uh, of course, uh, our selection uh, board will look into your um, all past experience, including the academic ones. Thank you. OK, let me see. What other questions do we have? Uh, how many trainees do we accept per year? So on average, uh, approximately 100. Right now we are 109. OK, and we foresee to stay uh, in um, within these numbers. OK, I'm just scrolling, try to see what are the other questions published. Uh, OK, since it is one year contract, will non-EU candidates be supported for their uh, visa? OK, so here, of course, uh, non-EU candidates, you are welcome to apply. Uh, you are, of course, uh, the one responsible for uh, getting your visa. However, in case you are selected, we will, of course, provide all the necessary information that you should uh, present uh, to the embassy or uh, the consul to get uh, to get your visa. Uh, OK. Trying to see if other questions are coming. Would it be possible to have some more insight and specifics on the thematic areas to which it is possible to apply? I think we have uh, give you already a bit of information, but still I, I was thinking maybe if you find useful, I would ask uh, at home my slide master. Uh, maybe you can show us the slide on uh, science uh, from um, from farm to fork. I think like Absolutely. this, you can also you can also at home yeah. have a look. No, the, the at the end. At the end, we should have, because I see also questions coming on what would be also the specific work. So I would say that one, science, food, safety from farm to fork. So here you can see um, just some of uh, some of the topics uh, we, we currently work so that also uh, our training community is actively uh, involved. So you can see from uh, plant health, the Chilela that might sound familiar to you, uh, the animal and the um, welfare, the, the swine fever, the salmonella, the artificial colors, and actually making all this even more exciting for you if you are looking for uh, more information on uh, what's coming, what are our new challenges. I think we can show just the next um, two slides. So not this one, the other one. Next one. Thank you. So these are the new challenges 
our people our people at AFSA are uh, currently working with. No, I think you know the novel foods now. It's uh, uh, in uh, in our minds, in our daily uh, daily lives as well. The chemical mixtures, um, all. You know, unfortunately, all the hazards also linked to uh, the globalization. So we, these are also topics that um, not only uh, people at us uh, are dealing with, but our trainees are, uh, of course, actively involved in. Uh, thank you, Christiana. Um, let me see what more questions do we have? Ah, OK, OK, I see. OK, there are also uh, questions around uh, what are the skills that ESSA uh, looks for uh, in trainees? You know, I think we had a great testimonial there. Uh, sure, you know, he really touched upon that core aspect of being an ESSA trainee because you really get uh, uh, your hands on developing yourself, learning and developing on the job and really mature and nurturing those soft skills. But in a nutshell, check our mission. We advise, we collaborate, we communicate. Check our values, excellence, openness, cooperation, accountability. So, of course, we look for team spirit. We look for openness to learn and grow. Check our vacancy. You will find there also all the key skills, the key competencies, you know, the working with others, having uh, a mindset uh, goal oriented, you know, the political savvy, um, also the ability, you know, the time management, project management uh, aspects. So these are also the things that we will uh, be looking for. Let's see. I also keeping a, an eye on questions coming in. OK. OK, there is also someone asking, uh, you know, what uh, what additional support uh, do, do we have? So also beyond the, the financial support uh we mentioned uh, we mentioned earlier so absolutely uh, we offer also other type of support for example uh, our trainees even before joining us they they can count uh, on your support in setting uh, their lives abroad so should you need support with any uh, administrative um, and practical questions to interact with uh, uh, local or necessary administrative services. We have a help um, desk line made av available by our relocation uh, services company. And actually on top of that, just uh, ring a bell now. Um, remember Rita mentioning about the trainership community, the TRACOP. No? Um, they are also actively working there. Uh, as you heard, they create, uh, they, they, they have a lot of initiatives and um, they also share tips and opportunities, for example, for accommodation and all these type of uh, additional things that you need to, uh, to think um, when joining us. Okay, let's see. Uh OK, I think we. Would be Paul OK, I think we've managed to answer. A lot of your uh, questions, OK, if uh, if not, please, uh, you know, you are always welcome to drop us uh, an email. Uh, there is a direct uh, functional mailbox and we are looking at it uh, on a daily basis. Uh, let's see, I'm looking to see if there are other questions. Okay, we have answered. Yeah, I can see you know frequent questions, but that we have answered already. Uh, okay. Yeah, the type of contract. Just remember that it's full time. Okay, it's twelve months full time. OK, with well, the, the, the tasks, of course, um, some of you are asking, well, really, uh, what type of tasks will I, uh, I be performing? Of course, that really depends a lot on the specific unit you will be uh, uh, assigned to. 
And then depending on the unit agenda, it can be uh, supporting drafting documents, analyzing data. You know, you can be involved in all the scientific preparatory work. Uh, but for example, uh, in HR, we have uh, also our trainees fully involved in big projects such as leadership development, um, organizational culture, employer branding, diversity and inclusion. OK. Um, OK, I think that. Do you, oh, OK, there is an, another question. Do we have any days for vacation? Absolutely. So just check our frequently asked questions as well. Uh, you can uh, <laughs> um, you can see that uh, you are also, of course, entitled to to vacation. OK. And I think we are done because all the other questions have been already answered throughout our presentation. So thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, well, uh, I think that uh, Time has come just to wrap up and uh, give you some key takeaways. OK, so just uh, let's see if we are uh, all on the same page. EFSA, we offer paid trainerships with the opportunity to spend 12 months at our headquarters in Parma uh, to candidate, candidates from all over the world, EU member states as well as international uh, candidates. Um, working at EFSA, uh, it's a rewarding experience, as you have uh, heard also from all our uh, testimonials. Uh, we recruit young professionals with different backgrounds, biology, chemistry, international relationships, accounting, veterinary. You, you could see also how our international team of specialists is as diverse as the food we assess. And I think we gave you a flavor of that with all of us today. Uh, you can count with a lively community of more than 100 trainees, all here working together with us in the heart uh, of Parma uh, and together making a difference to food safety. So we are reaching the end of this session and just before saying goodbye, I want to again to express our thank you, our gratitude for being here with us today. I want to say thank you to the team, Christiana, Patricia, Benso, Lina. It was delicious seeing you composing the menu with me with all our key ingredients. Thank you to Sure, Rita, Piera, Alex and Lina again. You really gave us that cherry on the cake by sharing your experiences, your thoughts and Thanks to all of you joining us. I hope you find it interesting, useful. We hope you have now a better idea on how and why you should embark on our one year all round traineeship experience at EFSA. And who knows, we might see each other very soon. And in the meanwhile, apply and stay in touch. Stay connected with all of us and with EFSA. Thank you so much and see you soon.